Nine Squadron operated from Vung Tau Airfield in Vietnam from May 1966 to November 1971 in support of the 1st Australian Task Force during the Vietnam War. The 1st Australian Task Force main base was situated at Nui Dat. Nine Squadron flew Iroquois helicopters, affectionately known as Hueys, and first operated eight Bravo models. The Bravo models were gradually replaced with larger Delta and then more powerful hotel models until the squadron operated 16 of the hotel models from about mid-1968. These aircraft cruised at about 90 to 105 knots, with a maximum airspeed of 120 knots, flying for about two hours on aviation turbine fuel. The standard crew of a nine-squadron Iroquois was pilot, co-pilot, crewman in charge of loading and operation of the rescue hoist and gun, both on the right side of the cargo compartment, and gunner, who would operate the machine gun on the left side and help the crewman. Embedded in Nine Squadron for most of its deployment in Vietnam were pilots of the Royal New Zealand Air Force, there were 16 in total, and a contingent of nine Royal Australian Navy pilots. All nine squadron ground and aircrew rotated through the squadron on staggered 12-month tours of duty to maintain a good spread of competence. A trickle of experience was sent home to be replaced by a trickle of new crew. Occasionally tours were extended. Many served two and a few three tours. Most of the aircraft were known as slicks, or troop and cargo carrying versions, with two M60 machine guns, one on each side of the aircraft, for self-defense, and a rescue hoist. The slicks could, and often did, conduct what was known as a dust-off, or a rescue of casualties. Although, when tasked as a dedicated dust-off aircraft, usually an Army or RAAF medic was carried in addition to the usual four crew. The call sign of these slicks was Albatross 01, for example, where 01 indicated the flight lead, followed by Albatross 02, 03, and so on. Three of the hotel versions of the aircraft were configured as gunships, call sign Bushranger 71, 71 indicating the lead aircraft, and Bushranger 72 and 73. The gunships were crewed by two pilots, a crewman, and a gunner. They did not have a rescue hoist fitted. They were armed each side with twin M60 machine guns, a total of four guns, each with 750 7.62 caliber belted ammunition rounds in a bin. There was also fixed forward-firing miniguns with around 10,000 7.62 caliber ammunition fed to both miniguns, and a rocket pod with seven rockets. These were 2.75-inch diameter folding fin aerial rockets, and the aircraft carried a total of 14. The rockets could be fitted with high explosives for bunkers and vehicles, flechette for anti-personnel fire, or white phosphorus heads for target marking, there were usually two of these, one in each rocket pod. Two gunships working together were known as a light fire team, and three gunships were a heavy fire team. Each dawn, usually following an intelligence and operations brief at Dingo Operations at Vung Tau, four slicks, a 01 to 04, and two gunships, Bush Ranger 71 and 72, would leave Vung Tau for the 10 to 15 minute flight to Nui Dat or to a planned mission then recover to Nui Dat for further planned tasks, or wait at Kanga Pad on immediate standby for unplanned tasks. There was a small duty crew of nine squadron maintenance personnel at the gunship rearm point at Kanga Pad, and also a number of refuel points. From November 1970 until November 1971, a dedicated dust-off aircraft, known as Albatross Dust-Off, maintained a 24-hour standby at Red Earth. 8th Field Ambulance Royal Australian Army Medical Corps, on Kanga Pad at Nui Dat. The nine squadron dust-off crews and aircraft would change over at dawn and dusk each day. The aircraft were standard nine squadron slicks, which were armed for self-defense and not marked with red crosses. In addition, unless tasked, Albatross 05 and Bush Ranger 73 crews and aircraft were on immediate standby at Vung Tau. The remainder of the crews and aircraft were held at Vung Tau at reduced readiness states unless or until tasked. If enemy action or another emergency arose, the crews would respond to that planned or immediate tasking. As shorter time readiness crews and aircraft left on tasks, the longer readiness crews cascaded to the next shorter readiness state, except when all were needed as soon as possible. 
Often pre-planned tasking meant that most or all crews and aircraft would move direct to tasks or land at Nuidat, before departing on task in company with part or all of the remainder of the squadron. The maintenance crews aimed to have 13 of the normal 16 aircraft available for tasking each day. Rarely was the aim missed, even when the squadron had lost aircraft to enemy action, and two were not replaced for quite a while. The nine squadron ground crew were magnificent, and their competence and dedication were crucial to the impressive aircraft serviceability rate, and thus the operational effectiveness of the squadron. The Bush Ranger gunships almost always operated as a tactical pair, or three ship, with Bush Ranger 7 1 as flight lead. The Albatross slicks often operated in pairs or larger formations, for example, SAS patrol insertions or extractions, or troop moves, with Albatross 0 1 as flight lead, usually in coordination with Bush Ranger 7 1 and 7 2, providing fire support. When coordinating a large operation, the commanding officer of nine squadron, or senior nine squadron executives, would fly as mission lead in an aircraft fitted with extra communications and carrying the ground commander and staff. Their call sign would be Albatross Charlie Charlie. This aircraft would direct the slicks and gunships to best meet the objectives of the mission in coordination with other supporting arms, for example, naval gunfire, airstrikes, and artillery. There were many routine tasks flown by nine squadron slicks on various single or multi-aircraft tasks. For example, logistic resupply, liaison, reconnaissance, special operations, spraying, maintenance test flights, medevac, and so on. Planned tasking of nine squadron was from the one ATF Tactical Air Operations Center at Nui Dat through Dingo Ops at Vung Tau. The Tactical Air Operations Center was manned by Army and RAAF personnel including a nine-squadron executive, who would plan tasking of nine-squadron for the next day and pass that plan by message to nine-squadron via dingo operations in Vung Tau. Unplanned tasks would be sorted immediately by radio, often to either Albatross 01 or Bush Ranger 71 when airborne, or by phone if the flight leaders and crews were at the nine-squadron alert shack at Kangapad, Nui Dat. Planned SAS recce's and patrol insertions and extractions were briefed by Albatross 01 at the alert shack, with the SAS patrol in attendance for the recce and insertions. Often SAS patrols had to be extracted when in contact with the enemy. Then Albatross 01 and Bushranger 71 would follow standard procedures to minimize risk during the hot extraction. The 9 Squadron Standard Operations Procedures Manual was complete, concise, and effective. The SAS and 9 Squadron were a well-practiced and harmonious team. Navigation within the one ATF area of operations in Phuc Thuy province was visual, using one in 100,000 or 50,000 scale tactical maps with a 1,000 meter grid overlay and covered in plastic laminate. Colored aerial recce photography was used when detail was necessary and available. Navigation beyond the one ATF area of operation was visual using adjacent tactical maps or ONC air navigation maps if venturing further afield. For example, a 1 in 500,000 or 1 in 1 million air navigation maps. Usually flights were above small arms range at 1,500 feet above ground level in the area of operation. If operating at low level, aircraft would fly as close to the treetops as possible. Most of the area of operation was covered in jungle. However, low level flight over open country was avoided if possible. During medevac, or dust-off, at night, there was often a difficult trade-off between the risk of hitting ground and obstacles or being hit by ground fire. There were no night vision devices, and night navigation was visual, often below lowest safe height due to cloud overcast. 